Good afternoon. This is Amy Ryan, Deputy Editor of Metering and Smart Energy International, coming to you from the African Utility Week studio. Today I have with me Monica Weber Farr, who is the Chief Operating Officer at Sustainable Energy for All. Welcome, Monica. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, can you tell me firstly um, what SE4 stands for and what the organi organization does? Thank you. And I have to apologize for an acronym okay. that most people do speak about us as SE4 All, yes. and it's quite unclear what it actually means and what it does. Mm -hmm. So SE4 All or Sustainable Energy for All was set up a couple of years ago mm -hmm. primarily as a lobby initiative. Okay. to lobby for energy to be part of the global dialogues about development. Okay. So as a direct result of that hard work of a small group of people that operated globally, we managed to be able to bring into the discourse and into the awareness of development the relevance of energy. You have to imagine that um, developing country aims and goals were usually formulated in terms of health and well-being things that relate to poverty, which absolutely matter. Yeah. But what weren't, wasn't paid much attention to were the infrastructure elements that were essential to get there. Okay. So with the recognition now, last year at the UN, by setting up a goal specifically for energy, the goal number seven, yeah. that lays out some direct objectives for every country to aspire to on energy, uh, came into being then Sustainable Energy for All as the organization that we're looking at now. Okay. We're still a lobby organization, but we're now focusing on a specific aspect of getting things done. Mm -hmm. So now that the community in the world has decided on certain objectives, specifically mm -hmm. on the objective of access, of 100% access to energy, access to energy for everyone, which in a continent like Africa is quite astounding, yeah. given that on average, you're uh, below 35%, and in many countries below 12% or so, mm -hmm. or 10%. That is a major, major goal. Access yeah. to energy combined with energy efficiency, and that's why I'm so glad that you, coming from the metering side, yes. are interviewing me, and combined with renewable energy. Yeah. So around these three goals, 100% access and doubling the amount of renewables and doubling the degree to which we're efficiently using and producing energy. These are the goals of Sustainable Energy for All. Okay. Now that was a very long answer, <laughs> but that hasn't even gotten to the point of what we actually do. Okay, well so, maybe that could be my next question. Um, let's put it in the context of Africa. Yes. Um, what, what, what are your current activities? What does SE for All actually offer the governments of, in, in Africa, utilities and those entities? Right. So, um, SE for All, or Sustainable Energy for All, is a platform for governments, the private sector and civil society to come together around specifically the actions that are needed to get ourselves to 100% access, to get ourselves to doubling renewables and to get ourselves to doubling the energy efficiency we have or the energy productivity, if you will. Now, in being a platform, there's a number of services that we offer. Okay. One of them is we benchmark progress. Mm -hmm. So we look very, very carefully through our global knowledge hub that is hosted by the World Bank at how every country, including every African country, is doing. Okay. We produce every other year a report that then says, OK, here, guys, you have moved and you haven't, and this is why. Um, secondly, uh, we marshal evidence. Mm -hmm. So we actually look very carefully at where countries have been able to make a particular dent in either their access or their renewables or their energy efficiency and try to say, yes, the evidence is actually there that this has helped. Okay. Thirdly, we tell stories of success. And that's one of the things that particularly on the African continent there's plenty of. Even though they may be small or hidden, but these are the stories that when you work with leaders, which is the platform level on which we're operating, it's the stories of success that make oftentimes more of an impact, give more inspiration. We also give voice to the energy poor. And in giving voice to the energy poor, I have to say that is an important aspect of a service, if you will, that oftentimes gets forgotten in that yeah. big equation. Because it's the energy poor that say, you know, I don't need your grid 
mm. it's enough for me to have the ability to charge my phone. Yeah. And maybe next year I want to have the ability for something else and next year for something else. Well, in the capital cities, they're still designing networks. Mm. Right? It's the energy poor that have the urgency that need it. And lastly, we connect leaders with each other and ideas. And that is also something that we're doing quite actively right now here, in fact, at the Africa Utilities Week. Okay. Um, and then tell me, um, in reference to the Paris Agreement um, and with a lot of international countries offering to help Africa kind of reduce their carbon emissions, um, Africa at the moment is still has the challenge of generating capacity. How do we balance that, that double-edged sword? How do we balance the responsibility of generating uh, electricity and of then, of course, we, our environmental responsibility of reducing our carbon emissions? So it's actually, I mean, and that's a very good question that you're asking, but what you were suggesting with that question is that there is a trade-off. Yeah. And in a sense, it's a false trade-off. It's a false trade-off for two reasons. One is, if it was more difficult or more costly, or it would take much, much longer to use renewables in feeding into your energy mix, then it would be a trade-off. Yeah. But the fact is, it's not. In fact, it's as cheap or cheaper. It is much more available, in particular to the underserved populations. Yeah. And it is as easy or easier and faster. What it does require, though, is to think differently about how you're bringing energy out. We still think about energy like we grew up in the last 30, 40 years. Energy has to come out of a socket. Yeah. Into the socket, it comes through a line. That line gets fed by a utility. Mm -hmm. That then links to a big power plant. Yeah. Now, this is what we thought about telephones. Yeah. By now, over 67% of Africans have a mobile phone. Yeah that is not connected to a landline. Mm -hmm. If we had asked that question 15 years ago, they would have said, I'd love a phone, yeah. but you know, I need that line in the wall and that line need to go there and there is then the phone provider, right? Yeah. That's not the case anymore. Mm -hmm. Now we know that we cannot bring energy fast enough to people on the African continent if we're waiting for the utilities to lay the lines to everyone. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so with that, there is no contradiction. The other really interesting thing about the Paris Agreements is that what they're not only looking at is, is say, um, use less fossil fuels, they're also saying, be more efficient. Yeah. We have utilities, and particularly on this continent, that have 50% losses from start to end, right? Sometimes 30% losses just in the distribution yes. network, right? Just think about how much extra for free energy you would get if you would eliminate these losses. Mm -hmm. And there are technical losses, but there are also losses that have to do on how the access is actually administered, how it's metered. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the metering industry comes in. Mm -hmm. it can make a huge contribution to addressing climate change by opening that unused energy source that's called energy efficiency. Yeah. And that's where the metering comes, the factor comes in, is that all the rollouts in the, on the continent are all trying to achieve that aim, becoming more energy efficient, let's uh, have uh, customers get access to their data. Pay with a payment card or mm. with using their mobile phone. Mm. So if the metering industry manages to get their meters cheap enough, mm. reliable enough and accessible mm. enough, then the metering industry can make a massive yeah. impact yeah. on the access to energy equation. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was a recent report, or could be a, a report from last year, um, called Scaling Up Finance for Sustainable Energy. It focused on four broad areas where, it, almost as a guideline to scale up investment or increase investment, direct investment. Yeah. Um, can you touch on those four broad themes? So, you know, one can cluster these things in <laughs> three, four or seven. Um, but it was very interesting. This is a report that uh, came out from the Sustainable Energy for All Finance Committee, mm -hmm. which is, you have to understand, we, as a platform, one of the things that we do is we bring together leaders and say, okay, use your collective brains and tell us in which direction we should be going. Mm -hmm. So in our advisory group, in which we have some of the best minds of the world 
on finance for energy. We had a smaller group coming together and trying to really rack their brains and come out with some recommendations. So they said a number of things. First of all, they said money is out there, mm. but what we need is a stable pipeline of okay. projects, of what the industry calls bankable projects. Yeah. And that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist, uh, not everywhere, in many places it does exist, but not to that volume, not mm. to that size. The reasons are manifold, but they have to do oftentimes with capacity, but okay. also with capacity in the financial sector, in the ecosystem of people. If you are an energy uh, provider or utility and you want to expand, you want to go beyond the grid, you want to have off-grid projects, you want to ha have mini-grids, then you need people who can financially package that for you in a way that you can sell it to a bank. Mm -hmm. And that kind of infrastructure doesn't always exist. And there's a number of providers now who are coming into the continent in order to offer that. There's a lot of providers also from your own financial industry who are working on that. Um, so the, the stable pipeline of yeah. projects. Um, then there is a, uh, there is a sense that um, the governance of the sector okay. is, of course, a big issue. Right? The governance of the sector relates to many things. Some of them are sort of generic to doing business in difficult contexts that are plagued by absence of transparency, mm -hmm. by issues to do with graft or so. But some are also very specific to the industry. They're about reliability of tariffs. Yeah. Right? If you want to have offtake agreements, you need to have reliability on tariffs. Yeah. But again, what can help there is if you get off the grid, yes. right? And if you focus on selling rather than tariffs, selling devices. Right? So some of these things can make a huge difference. Yeah. Would, would you say almost if, if the legacy infrastructure was almost, the challenges of legacy infrastructure was overcome, there wouldn't be as much of a debacle over feeding tariffs or the tariff structure or challenges in the tariff structure that there is today? Well, the challenges in the tariff structure have many, many dimensions and uh, the, the biggest uh, dimension is of course that it affects so many people uh, as a political uh, aspect of engagement, right? Okay. So um, I would not want to say that you can solve it okay. because you will have few people to go off the grid when they are on the grid right now unless energy is truly unreliable. So we have many countries in which you have four, maybe six hours of energy coming yeah. through the grid, right? In these countries, off-grid solutions are already there, right? People have generators, mm -hmm. people have rooftop solar. Yeah. They do it anyways, yeah. right? So at some point, I think you're quite right, the more we have good devices available in the countries, the less relevant the debacle about the tariffs will be. It's very interesting when you look at, for example, the trade unions in some yeah. countries who have access to maybe 10% of staff in a particular industry. Yet though, because they still have that say in the political space, they can make much more of a noise. Yeah. So while it may not be as impactful, I would still think that the utilities and the tariff discussions will remain okay. an important aspect. And we should look at that. But there are better ways of managing that. Okay. And then, um, as, your, as your title as Chief Operating Officer, to what extent um, are you involved or responsible for mobilizing financial investment in African energy projects? So, Sustainable Energy for All works with leaders to help them find the right partnerships that they need and help them unlock finance. We are very, were very clear when we were setting ourselves up that we did not want to be the advisors, we did not want to be the financiers, we did not want to manage projects. There's plenty of organizations around there who do it and who do it well. Where the issues are is that we have an energy efficiency community that doesn't talk to the financial community. Where we have a utility community that doesn't really know how to engage with the financials. Okay. Where we have governments who have trouble struggling with figuring out what the right business models are, when they are all out there. 
So what we're really trying to do is we're trying to bring these various points together. What I can say is that as a CEO, together with my colleagues in the leadership team and under the guidance of our CEO, Rachel Kite, we are working very actively to help unlock the finance. Okay. okay. Um, and then tell me, uh, Monica, um, what is your advice to the delegates here at African Utility Week or C and CEOs of African Utilities today? So my advice would be, and I've spent some time today with the CEO forum yes. of the utilities. Yes. Uh, my advice would be think big. Okay. As leaders, our natural instincts are to think about how we can avoid failure. Mm -hmm. We need to think about how success looks like. We need to think about the woman 150 miles away of a capital that is a nurse, that is in a hospital, that has access to energy 24 hours because there is a solar panel that delivers it to her and that is able to deliver a surgery that she has studied on an online program mm -hmm. uh, over the last month, all that because she had the energy to do it. We have to think about how to make that possible. Yeah. And that means we have to imagine a renewable portfolio for the utilities that is not less than 10%, but that is 20, 30, 40, 50%. And if we imagine that, then we can make it happen. Okay. So I believe and I have seen that major, major changes can happen in a utility portfolio. We have seen it in Asia, we have seen it in some African countries. So now it is about the leadership to mobilize together with the various support organizations that are around there, to mobilize the political will mm -hmm. and the organizational stamina to get it done. Because change is hard. Mm -hmm. Change is very, very hard to do on an everyday basis. Yeah. And we all need to help the CEOs to do yeah. it so that we don't exactly. leave them with that task. Yeah. And then lastly, um, is there anything about uh, SE for All that you'd like the audience to know? Um, is this something that's not been uh, just maybe an interesting thing that SE for All does or that is about that maybe the average person doesn't know about? You see, I think in an ideal life, nobody would have to know that sustainable energy for all even exists <laughs> because a sustainable energy is there, yeah. right? And you haven't even noticed it. Now, as it were, we exist because there's huge inertia in the system despite all the money floating around and despite all the sense of urgency that people have, there's still inertia. What we're looking for right now, and if somebody, anybody watches that, is we're collecting stories of success. Okay. If you have seen a story somewhere of somebody who's been able to be a leader, mm -hmm. to turn around in a situation of inertia, to move into renewables, to yes. provide access to people that didn't have it, to bring cooking stoves, to introduce meters, to do something extraordinary in a situation where it wasn't there before, and introduce energy efficiency where beforehand there was waste, massively increased productivity of energy. You have stories of leadership there. Get us that story. It's www.se4all.org. Send us your stories. Okay, great. Monica, thank you so much for your time today. Um, it's been great talking to you. Great pleasure. Thank you for okay, having good. me. Um, that's all we have time for today. Um, but Amy Ryan from Metering and Smart Energy International coming to you from the African Utility Week studio. Thank you.